Story 1. My husband would choose his girl best friend over me any day. I, 29 female, got married a year ago yesterday. My husband, 30 male, and I have been together for five years in total. My husband has been best friends with Sasha, 30 female, since they were in diapers. I knew that, and I never really had a problem with their friendship until my husband and I officially started dating. Sasha would always try and get between us, and every date we went on, she was there, coincidentally, which was relatively annoying because my husband would let her stay with us on all those dates. Now, yesterday was my wedding anniversary, and my husband forgot since he had a road trip with Sasha. I didn't know about this road trip until he said he was leaving. Didn't, I didn't bother telling him it was our anniversary since he didn't remember and he would probably still spend the day with Sasha even if he did know. I didn't bother telling him bye. I just walked out and decided I was going to go shopping and do something for myself. I did that, but then his mother called me during the day wishing me a happy anniversary and asked where my husband was because he wasn't answering his phone. I told her the truth about his whereabouts, and he didn't remember our anniversary. She was shocked and told me that she didn't think Sasha and my husband still had feelings for each other. I asked what she meant. She said that they did date in high school, but my husband told me that he never did like Sasha romantically. Everything started becoming more clear now. Maybe he did remember our anniversary, but chose not to say anything because he loved Sasha. If he loved her, could have told me before we got married. I would have been hurt, but I understand feelings, and I know you can't control them. I don't know how to comprehend anything right now. I'm numb, and I don't get it. All I know is that my husband doesn't even love me. It just sounds like you need to have a very big long conversation. I mean, I understand that you might be upset, but when he gets back, you just need to really talk about this. You might have to stay elsewhere for a while. I don't know, but there's a lot of lack of communication around here, and it's kind of surprising how you got married in the first place since Sasha seems to be there for all of this stuff. I'm just wondering... How that happened? Was she was she at the ceremony hogging her way into the pictures? Was it like that intense? Story 2. Doc pay for being late by two minutes? Enjoy paying massive overtime. I worked in an electricity retailer call center. It was highly unionized, but the management tracked login times to the minute. One incredibly ridiculous thing that they did was if you were a minute or two late... They would literally dock your pay by that many minutes. It wasn't really enough for us to really notice, and I'm sure they didn't actually save any money. I mean, if you were 15 minutes late, I could understand not paying, but three minutes late? Well, eventually the union discovered what they were doing and were completely ticked that they hadn't been consulted about this jerk move. This is where their malicious compliance comes in. The union demanded login and log off times for everyone in the call center. What management hadn't counted on was that all of us would often need to wrap up calls and clear the call queue before the call center could officially close. This often meant that operators would leave several minutes after their shift. On bad occasions, it could be 15 to 20 minutes late before they could clock off, but mostly it was only a few minutes. The union made management recalculate everyone's pay for the year based on clock-on and clock-off times. They also pointed out that staying past the end of shift triggered penalty rates. It turns out everyone, and I mean everyone, had spent time, more time, wrapping up calls at the end of the day than they were late clocking on. Each of us got paid for lost wages at overtime rates. It cost them a fortune, and they never docked the pay of anyone who was late ever again. I mean, yeah, 
you're going to get that nitpicky. Someone is going to get that nitpicky back at you. I mean, not well thought out at all. I mean, did anyone have a service rep? Did anyone that was a boss at this company ever have any dealings with union at all? I think they're going to pay more attention next time. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 3. Maleficent's Revenge. How my cousin exacted revenge for years of entitled parent behavior. Backstory. My mom is the oldest of four children and gave birth to me a few months before her youngest sister, let's call her Cruella, gave birth to my cousin, Maleficent. From the day she brought Maleficent home, Cruella groomed my cousin to be a beauty pageant kid. She started getting Maleficent's hair done as soon as she could and raised Maleficent to only wear dresses and very dainty shoes. When I briefly lived with my aunt, she used the money my mom sent home to provide for my car to get Maleficent new clothes and hair. Cruella had a full-time job as a grocery store cashier and also received child support from Maleficent's father, who was in the U.S. Air Force, but she spent thousands of dollars on making sure her daughter was always beauty pageant ready. When we got older, I was a grade level ahead of Maleficent. Cruella made Maleficent compete with me academically regardless of the difference in our classes. We were both good students and lived in different states, but Cruella would call my mom once a month and would ask detailed questions about my report cards. If mom told her that I earned all A's, Cruella would implement various punishments until Maleficent had just as good or better grades. At first, Cruella would belittle her own daughter with taunts. Then she would deny buying Maleficent any cookies, toys, etc. until her grades improved. When we started hitting our growth spurts, Cruella would make Maleficent wear old dresses and shoes that were way too small until her grades improved. Naturally, this made life difficult for me and my mom. Maleficent grew to resent me, and she often did petty things to get me in trouble, like breaking my grandma's doll collection, breaking dishes, and even fought me a couple of times when I refused to be bullied. Mom stopped discussing my grades with Cruella, which worked until Mom and I moved back to her hometown, where Cruella lived, and enrolled in the same school as Maleficent. Then Cruella began to volunteer at the school on report card days just to find out what my grades and Maleficent's grades were. This continued into our college years. I ended up dropping out of college after three semesters as I had developed a drinking problem. I had to undergo a few months of treatment. Maleficent was enrolled in college by this time, and Cruella maintained her streak of competition by calling my mom to report on how well my cousin was doing before snidely pointing out that I was no longer in college. I changed phone numbers after Cruella called me one day to tell me that Maleficent was applying to study abroad and asked how my borderline minimum wage retail job was going. The irony was that Maleficent would end up being a fourth-year junior in college when I finally returned to college. More on that later. By the time I returned to college, our grandma, mom and Cruella's mom, was in a nursing home due to dementia-related issues and problems. She had been diagnosed while we were in high school, but the disease was progressing rapidly. Mom, being the eldest child, quit her job to spend every day at the nursing home, talking to grandma, reading to grandma, etc. Mom wanted to have grandma return to grandma's home but Cruella refused. Cruella had secured power as executor of the estate shortly after Grandma's diagnosis, meaning that she had the ability to place Grandma in the home despite her siblings' protests. It also meant that Cruella technically had ownership of Grandma's home and the land on which it sat. Fast forward a couple of years. Maleficent began dating a local pastor's son. Let's call him Charming. And they got engaged in April, after dating for three months. 
Cruella, coincidentally, was good friends with Charming's mother. Cruella wasted no time in bragging to my mom how Maleficent was engaged to be married. At this time, I was graduating from college, which really got under Cruella's skin. I still didn't talk directly to her, but I did keep up communication with my cousin. When I talked to her about the upcoming wedding, Maleficent revealed that Cruella was planning to take Grandma off life support and would use the money from Grandma's estate and insurance to pay for a lavish wedding. Maleficent also revealed that she did not want to marry Charming, was fed up with college. She was a seventh-year senior, basically living the life Cruella had created for her. I mentioned to my mom what Maleficent had said about taking Grandma off life support, and Mom was livid. She called Maleficent, and they crafted revenge together. In June, Cruella decided to host a very over-the-top party to celebrate the engagement. Mom and I chose not to attend as, as we chose to visit Grandma in the hospital together that night. So Maleficent's actions were reported to me by Maleficent herself, but I'm going to phrase them. Cruella had organized the evening so that the parents of the engaged couple and the engaged couple could stand to tell everyone in the room how amazing their respective families were. Charming and his parents had already gushed their praises for Cruella, and it was Maleficent's turn. Maleficent thanked Cruella for raising her, thanked Charming's parents for raising such a good son, then announced that the wedding was off. She took the opportunity to tell Charming that she did care about him, but would not marry him just because it was what their families expected from soon-to-be parents. Maleficent then left the party and spent the night with one of her friends from high school. This humiliated Cruella on a personal and financial level. She had already paid non-refundable deposits for a caterer, wedding reception hall, dress, limo, etc., and she was out hundreds of dollars. Furthermore, Cruella and Charming's parents were very against premarital spicy time, which made Maleficent's unexpected announcement even more appealing, or more appalling. Cruella had planned to keep the pregnancy as hidden as possible when, with the dress she had selected, the floral arrangement, etc., and Maleficent was expected to remain complicit. She called Maleficent and raged at her several times, but Maleficent stood her ground. She returned the car Cruella had bought for her and informed Cruella that she was dropping out of college as well, which would leave Cruella thousands of dollars in debt on student loans. Their drama took a backseat when Grandma passed away in early August. Maleficent had gotten a job in a corporate office by then, and showed up to the funeral looking very happy and very pregnant. At the funeral, we had a reception, and Cruella called Mom, me, Maleficent, and my uncle and other aunt into a room together to announce that she was going to sell Grandma's house and land and would split up Grandma's life insurance policy money as she saw fit. It was expected... It was the expected announcement from her and she phrased it as something Grandma would have wanted. I don't know who was smiling bigger, Mom or Maleficent, when they announced that they were contesting her power as executor of the estate. As Grandma's diagnosis of dementia had been announced just days before Cruella secured her position, Mom had consulted a lawyer to contest the decisions Cruella had made. Mom and Cruella ended up going to court and the matter was resolved less than a year later. Cruella's position as executor of the estate was overruled due to Grandma's mental capacity at the time. This meant that outside of a life insurance policy Cruella had taken on Grandma, she received no money directly. Maleficent is paying on her student loans, but Cruella is still paying off other debts from living beyond her means. Mom agreed to let Maleficent and her daughter move into Grandma's old house, and she and Charming are co-parenting. Wow. That was just... With names from a Disney movie, 
that was just about the type of planning that you would expect from a Disney animated movie. Just really the most ecstatically over-the-top way to get out from under someone's thumb. And just amazing that this person was just really suffering the fate of a Disney villain. Really, well, the American Disney villain equivalent, having to pay off debts or being under debt for so long. Story four. Today, I fracked up by exposing a customer's affair to his wife. So this took place maybe a half hour ago. And to be honest, there's still a chance there will be some kickback for this today. I, 25 male, work in a call center and I'm doing so for the duration of this pandemic while I wait to find out what's happening about going back to university. It's no career, but it's a pretty nice job with some decent people, and it's easy. All we do really is facilitate switches for people looking for better deals on household stuff, usually their internet provider or supplier of gas and electricity, etc. We have agents in the field who make sales, then call us for verification with the customer. Simple, right? Not today. See, usually it's company policy not to do callbacks. Nobody wants annoying call center calls, right? So unless the customer specifically requests a scheduled callback, we just don't do them. I had a customer two days ago looking for a pretty pricey internet switch, going from some basic setup to a full TV slash iPhone slash internet package, the works, all the channels, Anytime calls to numbers including international, 500 plus MBPS Wi-Fi, and it came to over $100 a month. I informed the customer, who's an impatient sounding guy, that because of the price increase, he'll need to have a quick credit check run on him, and it'll mean the call takes a little longer. The guy gets all ticked about being busy and says he can't waste all afternoon on the phone to some call center. So would it be all right if I called him after the weekend to go through it then? Seemed straightforward enough. This is pretty common. People are always up for the sale until they realize they'll need to spend more than one whole minute on the phone. But I scheduled the call anyway and asked if there was a specific time he wanted me to call. He says any time is fine and follows with, If Emily answers, just ask for me. She'll make sure I get the phone and gave me a home phone number. Fast forward to today, and I made a grave error. See, the application I had from the customer had his home phone number already filled in, which it turns out was not the same number he'd given me for today's callback. I called the number I thought was correct, and a woman answered. I say without thinking, Oh, hi. I'm calling for Steve to, cons to confirm his broadband switch. We spoke the other day. You must be Emily. Cue uncomfortable pause. She says, This is Steve's wife, Amanda. What do you mean I must be Emily? I apologized and said, I'm so sorry. When I spoke to him the other day, he said if Emily answered to just ask for Steve. And she just goes, I fracking knew it. I fracking knew knew it, and slammed the phone down. After checking the application against the post-it note I jotted some info down on the other day, I realized Steve must have given me the number for where he was going to be today, and I'd instead called his unsuspecting wife at home. Nobody's called into my workplace yet, but if they do, I don't think they'll be happy. Uh, just had to keep things straight. I mean, if no incredible reason to cheat, there is no reason to cheat. But this person just got sloppy, really sloppy. And it is just going to come back to bite him in wherever it is exposed and going to hurt badly. Ooh, all because, and also the mistress or whoever the the woman that he's cheating with is getting the big package and the the and the woman the wife is getting the basic package just salt in the wound right there 
please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.